everyone happy is it first day of spring hi christine 
good first day of spring afternoon. Yeah, good afternoon for the first day of spring. Sunny day. It's look, 52 out. That's exciting. Got to do a camera check. We good? Good. Good. Okay. So just a few more minutes. Christine, are you sewing along today? So hi everyone. Hope some of you will be sewing along. We just I'm just gonna wait uh, about three minutes um for people that might have just got their notification that we were live. Next Saturday I have to work all day. I haven't figured out how that's gonna work for our lives. And I think I wanna say is the following Saturday, Easter weekend. Oh, Christine, you're ready to sew and you're all in capital letters. Are you yelling at us? Just kidding. So a little piece of ribbon. I think I cut this one a little too short. Um, we're going to be doing a buttonhole. Well, let me rephrase that. I'm going to be doing a buttonhole. Oh, hi, Gloria. Happy spring. Spring is in the air. I think we're going to have, in New Hampshire, we're going to have a warm, I think, about three, three or four days. That's pretty exciting, considering it's only March. Isn't it nice to tune in for sewing and you... Uh, you get the weather report. Oh no, warm all week. Great news. Okay, so we just got another minute or so to go. Kind of, I'm trying to hang on to my piece of uh, vinyl so I don't. Uh, and I set it down, I can't see it. Okay, so if you didn't look at um, Miss Lorene's Facebook channel, channel, it's not a channel, is it? Page. Um, it was, so there's two back fabrics, a front and a back to the back fabrics, four and a half by six and a half. And of course, you can make these any size you want. There's two um, of the, I'll call it the pocket fabric, um, four and a half by five and a half. Um, let's see, clear plastic, vinyl. I want to say, I'm not positive, but maybe 14 gauge or so. You get it at, um, I'm sure Walmart has it, but I know Joanne's has it. You don't want it too thick. Um, and you really don't want it too too thick or too thin, just like, uh, what is it, Goldilocks. And I put a piece of Shape Flex onto one of my backs. So I always cut it a little smaller. So you could cut that. If this is four and a half by six and a half, you can make it four by six. That's fine. That way, when you press it, iron it, um, you're not getting any of the glue from it out anywhere. So two pieces there, two pieces here, and some vinyl. That's all we. That's all we need today. And I, I and I'll probably mention this again, but while we're killing a little time, um, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do a, a new one and put a snap here. I just the reason this came up is because I have a couple of. Um, loose leaf binders that I got for real cheap somewhere and they don't have a pocket that in the spine so I can tell what's in it so I thought if I put if I clip this onto the top ring and have it hanging over 
not only will it look pretty, but I'll know what's in there. And if I change it, I can change it up. So I didn't really care whether it was closed here or not. But I think we'll do a future one where there's a snap here so that when you're really using it for something you're out, you know, out and about with, um, whatever's inside here will stay in here. So let's see. What time is it? Time to start. Okay, so good afternoon to everyone, anyone that just joined in. We're making a luggage tag, and you can see I have one that's a little shorter, one that's a little taller. So you'll be able to, you know, make whatever whatever size you want. You can make it smaller, the window smaller. This one measures a little less than four inches by one, two, three, four, five, by about six inches. And this one is just five. Okay, so you can, I, I did this, kind of designed this as, uh, you can customize it to whatever you want. So, piece of vinyl, uh, about 14 gauge or so, uh, Joann's, I'm, I'm almost positive that Walmart would carry it as well in their um, fabric department. And that should be about four and a half by four and a half. I had this piece left over. And it's four by four, and that's going to be fine. Um, the back, let me use this one. The back has two pieces of fabric, and the pocket has uh, two pieces of fabric. So the back is um, four and a half by six and a half. I've put um, shape flex interfacing on one piece you could put it on both you can put something heavy it's all it's it's all up to you i i don't need to have it really stiff stiff so it doesn't matter um and then the pocket pieces are four and a half by uh five and a half because we're going to be folding the top part that comes across here down so we need a little extra now i cut this wrong but we're going to use it anyways, because if you'll notice, my my directional is this way. So if I was cutting this for, you know, for real, not that it isn't real, but if I was giving it to somebody or other ways, I'd have to remember that the directional needs to be going, uh, how would you say that, across the short side? Or well, when you look at it from the long side, it should be, it should look straight up and down to the long side. And the same with this one, because, you know, if you're going to cut something wrong once, you might as well cut something wrong twice. So this one would be the same way. So the length of the longer part, uh, your fabric should be in line with the, when you look at it, should look like this, only going on the long side. So I, I kept it so that I could remind you about directional, oh, excuse me, directional fabric. Okay, so if you haven't yet, go ahead and put your shape flex, and I cut it a, a half inch small, so this is four and a half by six and a half. Um, I would cut the shape flex four by six. This was, again, this was a scrap piece, so I just kept it the way it was. So we're going to fuse that onto one of your backs, and again, it's up to you if you want to, because shape flex is fairly light, so if you want to put one onto the other uh, side that's fine too so we're going to set those aside for for the moment well you know what let's go ahead and take care of what we need to do with this so i'm going to put them right sides together and if you want to have this little shape right here we're going to trim up the sides and what i'm going to do is I'm going to go to my mat. Oh, let me do this side so that the um, that the shape flex isn't distracting. So I'm going to put them right sides together because if I'm going to cut one, I might as well cut them both so they're exactly the same. I'm going to line up the corner on my mat so that I have it starts at the one inch, see the or or any inch line. So then I'm going to take my ruler. And I'm going to run my ruler diagonally across that one inch line. So, 
So you can see I'm diagonally across that, that one inch square. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the other side so I can turn it whichever direction I need to be to make it easier. So I'm going this way this time, so just in case whichever way it's easier for you to see it. Putting my ruler across so that my ruler is cutting right down the center on the diagonal of that one inch square on my grid. Okay? And I am going to, while they're nice and neat together, I'm just going to put a pin here that holds them together, okay? And then we can go ahead and set that aside. Now we need to make the, the, this pocket. And it's pretty simple. Um, I don't know. I might, I might uh, design a different type of pocket. We'll see. But this one's fairly simple, and I, and I personally always get a kick out of it when I, when I do this. So I want right sides together. And I got a little, I've got a little fold there, so I'm just going to give that a quick press. Because it wasn't laying quite flat. So right sides together. And I want the long way um, up and down. So the long way facing me, I guess. And the short is coming across on the horizontal. So the long, the long edges are vertical, short edges are horizontal. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to get my marking pen. And on three sides. I'm going to mark in an inch. Remember on the top, I want to make a little hem here to, for two reasons. So this is not a raw edge, but also I want to cover the vinyl um, so that you're not jabbing into it when you're putting something in and out of it. So, so if you have a directional fabric, make sure you go put... And you, and you go ahead with your, with your pen, your friction pen or whatever mine pen, and make sure you put top because the top and the bottom are two different parts. So we want to make sure that the top, your fabric is facing in the right direction because you don't want to end up doing the, the longer, the, the longer um, drawing of the, of the line on the bottom. So f just first thing you do, is just right top, just, you know, pencil, marker, whatever. It just, it's just for you to know, or put a pin there. You can put a pin there. Wh whatever's easier for you to remember, but do it right away. Um, don't think you're going to remember as you're turning this around. So I'm just going to take my ruler. On the one inch line is on the edge of my fabric. And I'm going to draw a line. Okay. Then I'm just going to turn. One inch again. Okay, and it can cross over, it doesn't matter. And then on the other, the uh, opposite long side, one inch again. And you, you don't have to go all the way to the ends. What we're trying to do is make a box here. And on the top, remember the top, we're going to go one and a half. Okay. So we want to have something that looks like that. What we're concerned about is this middle, not out here on these edges. So we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to stitch on this line all the way around. So we can put a few pins in, so nothing shifts on us. We want to be lined up as best we can, but we you don't have to be perfect because we'll trim it a little bit. So we're going to, and I'm not going to start in the corner. I'm going to start down here, and I don't need to lock it because I'm going to stitch over it when I come around. So we're going to stitch down, over, up, 
back and then down and then just go like a quarter inch or so over your first stitching and then do a locking stitch and you're all set. So everybody good to go there? Okay, <coughs> okay let's sew. Before I sew, I got to take a little drink or I'll keep coughing. Okay, so like I said, I'm not going to start up in the corner. I'm just going to start down here. And um, I have a Microtech 70 needle in, 7010, regular um, sewing thread. I have a baby lock, so <clears throat> excuse me. I have my J foot on, which is my main foot. And right here on the metal before the needle is a little mark. And that I'm going to have that mark follow the line. And we're just going to take our time. Try to be as straight as you can because it is going to be important. And I'm, I have my regular default stitch length 2.5. Just going to turn. You'll have both hands on your fabric. I'm just trying to keep my hands out of your way. And we're going to just go slow when it comes to get to the line. I went one stitch too far. So I just turned my wheel backwards, which takes that last stitch out. Put myself, put myself, put the fabric back where it belongs. So now the needle's in the right place. If, you, if you're if you going around and you don't fall right on the line, say you're a tad to the left, tad to the right, just as long as you keep straight, you're fine. Okay, so I'm going to do a locking stitch and then cut my thread and let's go back to the work table and I need to get pressing. So here we are, pressing. Oh, let me do this. Okay, so I'm going to take these pins out. And of course, if we if we sew, we iron. Because now my lines are all gone. I know where my top is now because I have more fabric up here than I do down here. <clears throat> so we need a pair of scissors. So our goal is we're going to cut out this center, but we need to leave about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So rather than trying to poke this in, just fold it in half. And we're just going to clip in the center because we know that's safe. So see? I feel like I'm going to oh, set everything on fire here. And I'm just going to cut up. And I'm going to be an eighth of an inch away. And I'll go ahead and cut mine so you can see if you want to see what an eighth of an inch, a little more than an eighth, but less than a quarter. How's that? If you're not sure when you cut things like this, then draw yourself a little line to cut on. It's okay. Take the minute to, to draw the line and then just cut on the line. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight because it's seam allowance, we already did our seam. So if your hand's a little jittery, it's okay. If you didn't cut straight, that's okay too. So this is what we're trying to accomplish. And let's see. There we go. Okay, you can see mine looks like a little, you know, weed whacker situation. 
That's okay. What we want to do now is we're going to go to the corner and see if I can do this. We're going to go to the corner and we're going to cut into the corner up to, but not into the stitches. See it right there? Oh. There we go. There's a good shot. And we're going to do that in all four corners. So if you put your scissor, uh, the fabric in the scissor, and have the point of your scissor where you need to end, then you'll be fine. Don't do this and hope for the best. So I'm just putting the end of my scissors up to just before the stitching line and cutting. And if your scissors don't cut out here, either get them sharpened or get a good pair of scissors because this is something you do fairly often. Now, if you don't stitch, if you don't cut in far enough, I'll show you what happens. So you don't have to worry, am I far enough or am I not? Because it can be fixed. The only thing that can't be fixed is if you stitch in, if you uh, cut in too far. Then you gotta start all over. Okay, so this is where the magic happens. We're gonna turn this right side out. And what that means is we're gonna take one part and stuff it in the hole. And, whoop, see, it went, it went back on me. Let's see if we stick a couple pins in. Give us an give us a a third hand because it it is kind of awkward when you're just using this little little piece. So I'm going to get this corner over. It doesn't matter if it's straight or not. I'm just going to get a corner over and just stick a pin in it. Because it is kind of flimsy, and you could um, you could have used shape flex on this as well. I I just uh, I, I didn't bother. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it so right along here is where the seam allowance is. So I got this little part straight. I'm going to go ahead and press that. Okay, and if you want to, just to help you out a little bit, and I'm going to go, whoop, I'm going to place for my iron now. I'm going to go around to the other side. I've never tried it with the pins. I just thought I'd try that today. Now, if your corner is puckery, then you may not have had you may not have cut in far enough, but before you do anything, let's get the whole thing straight before we determine that. Because it might just be puckery, a little bit puckery if you haven't stitched it. I mean if you haven't pressed it. And try not to get the, it's a rectangle. I, I know I refer to it as a square, but we'll call it the window. Try not to get the window out of shape. And if you have your big iron, give it a shot of steam. I got this one hot one side that just doesn't want to doesn't want to sit down and behave. So I'm going to take all the pins out. And again, you don't have to use pins. And I'm just going to flip it over. And 
keep an eye on this opening, the window, being straight. If the fabric, like my fabric, looks a little crooked, that's fine. We can fix that. We want the window to be straight. My right side doesn't just doesn't doesn't want to behave itself. Okay. Now you're gonna pick whichever side you like better. My directional doesn't doesn't uh, look so noticeable anymore. This with a big window in the middle. But you're going to pick whichever side looks better. Well, I'm going to give this one more press. There we go. Now it's behaving a little more. Okay, so you're going to pick whichever side you like best and put it down. So you want to be looking at the, the side you don't like the best is facing up. And we're going to get our vinyl, and we're going to place it in the center. Now, it doesn't have to be perfectly centered all the way around because it, it, it could shift a little bit. But we want to make sure there's plenty on each side that when we sew it, it isn't going to move it isn't going to move down. And we have to use our clips for this. Um, because you don't want to leave marks. You'll, you'll put holes in your vinyl and that, that don't go away. And make sure it, it's nice and flat that you're not pulling the fabric in to make the vinyl work. Okay, so there's my vinyl. I'm going to put another pin, I mean, another clip up here. And I am, I am, my fabric is coming in a little bit because remember, my piece of vinyl is, is smaller than what I, what I had told you to cut. And of course, down this end, this is that top. That fabric is a little longer, so I just I just squeezed in the fabric in a little bit. So I found, surprisingly, I found that stitching this with the top up was no issue. It was it was normally you would stitch something that's uh, like batting or whatever. You'd have it on the bottom for the feed dogs to get it. But this didn't work out that, that way. It works better. And I didn't use a Teflon foot. I just had my J foot. Okay. So we're going to stitch this with the wrong side up, which is the side the vinyl is on. Okay. So, and I just want to double check the back. I'm going to go ahead and put a pin up on this top one. And I'm pinning where just the fabric is, not the vinyl. And I, I feel like I'm a little, I feel a little, I'm a little crooked here. So I want to just check both sides to make sure my window is not askewed any, anyway. Okay. So vinyl, we're only going to stitch once. And uh, we're going to stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around. We're not going to do the three forward, three back. So when we come back around, I would stitch over my other stitching, maybe two stitches, and then just do a lock in place. Okay, Christine is saying, I'm not getting how to turn this. You just have to take your time and put some pins in and turn it right side out. It, it's a little uh, odd at first. And it's a little flimsy, but you'll get it. Okay, so now we're ready to sew. 
I'm not using any special needle. I got my Microtech needle still in. And I'm going to stitch um, like an eighth of an inch from the window side. And remember, the vinyl's on top, so the vinyl's on top here, not underneath. Now I'm going to just take those clips off, get them out of the way. Oh, I need to go one stitch more. And I'm going to go ahead. This is where I kind of scrunched up the fabric. I'm going to try to keep this as straight as I can. Just take your time. Okay, now I feel like my I feel like my windows bowing out. You may find that you want to use some um, shape flex to give a little more body to the to your fabric if your fabric tends to just you know um, kind of go off off kilter a little bit. And then I'm back to the beginning. And I'm just going to stitch up to where I started and lock it in place. And I'll bring it over to the uh, work table and give you a little close-up shot. So that's about the distance away that you want to be all the way around okay now we don't want to press this because it's vinyl if you find at some point you do need to press which you probably will um, then you're going to put a cloth on top and you're just going to put your iron down for you know like a half a second just to kind of warm it and you will feel your vinyl might get a little softer, but it's still okay. Oh, good. You got it, Christine. Good. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is I just want to kind of square up my fabric any place that I'm a little, a little crooked. And I want to make sure, I want to try to have an inch from the opening to my edge. But if I'm a little crooked and I need a little more, just come in. You know, a, a little seven eighths, whatever whatever it takes to get you straight, whatever it takes to get you straightened out. You just want to try to have the same distance on all sides. And the uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the right, uh, right and left and and bottom. Remember, this is the top, and we don't want to cut that down because we need a little extra there. But we do want it to be straight, so it should be an inch and a half. And if it's not, then just move down a little bit and get it straightened out. Okay, so this should be the top. Uh, now I'm facing the front because my extra vinyl is in the back. And I'm going to go ahead and trim some of my vinyl away. And I'm just going to use the scissors, move my fabric out of the way. The reason why we have extra is because the vinyl, if it shifts a little bit when you're doing your window, uh, you're still okay. So I'm going to trim it, and then I'll show you. So I'm about, there you go, you can see right there. 
I'm about a quarter inch above my stitching. And I'm going to do that on the three sides. I'm going to hold my top for a minute. Well, I thought I was done cutting, but there was still more vinyl. I couldn't see it. And also, I'm just going to curve these edges. You shouldn't be able to get down into this section with your hands, but let's curve them just, just, just in case. <coughs> Excuse me. They don't have to be pretty curves. Okay, so I curve the bottoms. Uh, I think you can, wait a minute, almost had it. Let's see. I just got to hit, I got to let the light hit it just right. Oh, there we go. Well, it, right there we go. See, I just curved it a little bit. Okay, and I want to, you know, I told you, try to trim those threads off as we go. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, I got threads everywhere. I think I'm picking up threads. Okay, so what we want to what we what we want to do is so this is the front, and we can tell because there's the extra vinyl there. What we want to do is we're going to fold this back and make a hem. We're going to double fold it um, so that the vinyl at the top, which is loose right here. So when you go to put something in, you don't want to get it like between your fingernail and your finger, and that would really be painful. So in essence, what we're going to do is we're going to take this top fabric, we're going to fold it under about a quarter of an inch and press it, and then we're going to fold it again to the back. So um, I guess I should have left one undone. Oh, here we go. Whoop. Okay, so see how I got a little a little hem there. So we need to trim some things away. So I want you to be sure, because once you trim this, you can't untrim it. I want your your front facing up. Okay, so the vinyl is in the back. And I want you to take that fabric because we need to use that. And just we're just going to pull that out of the way. And I'm just going to clip it out of my way. So I know no matter what I trim, I'm, I, 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 this is the fabric I'm going to make my hem with. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to trim this top vinyl down. And I can't get too far down because I'll cut the fabric. So you can do it, I think, about the same as you did your other ones, the quarter inch, maybe a, maybe a tad less. So when I folded all the fabric down, I cut just above where this folds. Okay? And because this front fabric is going to come around to the back, I don't need this whole big piece of the back fabric. So I can cut it and... and um, well, I was going to use my ruler, but my clips are in the way. Hold on. Take my clips off. Let me cut mine, and then I'll tell you exactly what you should cut yours. And I'm trying to keep my ruler in my window nice and even. So if I fold this and fold this, so I cut, I cut this, this is the back, back fabric. I cut it a half inch from the stitch line. Make sure this front one is way out of your way, okay? So I can see my front fabric through my window. And then I just lined up and I, and I went a uh, half an inch 
I'm a little crooked here. So I have a half an inch of my back top fabric left. And when you trim up your vinyl and you have these little pieces, throw them away right away because they, they can be pretty sharp if you drop them on the floor and you can't see them. Okay. So we still have the back. The back is facing up. And what I want to do is I'm going to fold this longer piece down, which is the front piece. I'm going to fold it down about a quarter of an inch simply because I don't want to have a raw edge when I fold it again. And I'm just going to press that so I'm not near the vinyl. Okay, and you know with the vinyl, everything wants to keep popping up. Just press it down, and then I'm going to fold it again. And I just want to make sure that I'm covering my edge of my vinyl. Okay, so you would have, you could cut uh, from the from the seam line to the edge of the vinyl should be about a quarter of an inch. So I'm just gonna fold this over, okay? And I really prefer not to stitch on the line I already stitched on because it's vinyl and I don't wanna perforate it. So I can see my stitch line right along here. Let me, uh, let me clip mine. I just wanna be sure that I'm covering that sharp edge of that vinyl. Oh. So I'm above that stitch line because I want to stitch along here so I can be above it. I can be a little higher above it. It depends where the end of my vinyl is. The goal is to just cover that raw edge of that vinyl so when you're sticking a paper or something in the tag you don't get cut or get that vinyl between your fingernail and your finger that'd be painful and i want to make sure i fold as straight as i can across that top because that's going to be this little section right here so you really want to have it as even as possible across. So no matter what you fold, just make sure it's as even as you can get it across. So I'm looking at it from the back and I'm gonna turn it over to the front just to eyeball to make sure that my, uh, my um, width here is the same all the way across. Okay, but I'm gonna sew from the back side because I want to sew at the edge of my little, my little hem. I'm going to sew along this edge to hold it down. Okay? Just make sure your vinyl, your edge of your vinyl is inside of that hem. Okay? And make sure that your hem is above the stitching that you previously did for the vinyl you don't want to stitch in the same spot okay so we're going to go ahead and sew that and where oh, where i have this clip at the end and i've got to take it out if i want to let me find a pin I can put a pin in to hold it till I get to hold it until I get started, but stay out of the vinyl, okay? Because you know, once you take the clip in, it wants to pick back up, and and what happens is is this edge comes up too high. It 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 wants to go to the right which would you'd lose the straightness that you had going here
okay? I don't need to lock the stitch. You can if you want to. We don't need to because we're going to be coming by here with a seam anyway, okay? So if we look here and we look on the on the where the window starts and where this hem ends, this should be as close to the same distance as possible. It's a luggage tag, not your prom dress. And it's your first practice one, so give yourself a break and relax and you'll you'll be okay. Okay, I'm gonna keep my finger right on that hem when I take that clip off. Alrighty, that wasn't too bad, was it? Okay. I keep picking up little threads. So there's our second second stitch. It's going all the way across. So I think you can see, there we go. You can see over here where the light is. That's there, that's where it was to the edge. Okay? And I'm going to give that little hem just a little press so that we have a nice crease where we folded that over. Flatten that out nicely. And if you need to go around, so I'm, I'm not on my vinyl, just to make sure everybody's happy and getting along. Okay? We're almost done. Well, except for the buttonhole. Let me check and see if there's any questions. All righty. So we want to have, let's get rid of some of these threads. I think I'm just picking up threads from on my table. Oh, and I can see I just I just um, ironed in a little crease. There we go. Okay, let's get some things out of the way here. Okay, so you can be a little raggedy out here. It's okay. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to take a half inch seam when we do our final seam. It's really going to bring it in quite a way. So if you're still a little raggedy out here, it's okay. So I want to have this facing right side up. I got my tag. Remember, we got a pin up here. And the reason I put the pin up there is because I can open this up, put my window in. All right, try to have it as straight across here as you can. So if you need to, let's line the tag up here. And then we can line our pocket up with another one of the lines on the mat. Okay, we're going to close it up. And we're going to clip it. Now remember, let me show you mine. So keeping it lined up this way across, I'm a little, uh, uh, let me see if I can, let me see if I'll, I'll try to turn it and show you. I have a little more fabric underneath than I do on top, but I want to try to make sure that my window's in the middle. Okay, so if I put this on the mat, so remember it's four and a half. So, so we're going to do four and a quarter and a quarter, and then just look to see if our window's in the center. Remember, we're going to take a half inch seam, which would be, I'm trying to, can't use the rule. I don't think the rule will show. Maybe it will. We're going to take a half inch seam. So can you see how far in? We are from that edge. 
So don't fret if this edge isn't perfect. Okay? So we're going to close our tag. So we're making a sandwich. The right side to right side of the bigger part of our tag is facing each other. Our window is right side up. And we're going to put some clips in. Now, if you wanted to put pins in, you could, but you'd have to run them this way. So if I wanted to put a pin in, I could do like that. Can you see my pin? Because I don't want to pin into the vinyl. This is handy. We made this, we made this last week, didn't we? I think we did. It's very handy. And I got to I keep saying I got to get my bag of clips out and add more to it, but I only think of it like right now. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to stitch, let's see. About 3 quarters of uh, yeah, 3 I'm trying to see how big an opening we can have here. Okay. So we're going to start stitching I could say a half inch from the edge, but but then we're going to be a half inch in. So let me let me let me draw a little line. So we're having a half inch seam. We got to have an opening here. So I have to, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to pin so that I'm not in the vinyl. Stab myself, but I'm not in the vinyl because I got to have my two pins where to stop. There we go. Because remember, we have we have um, more fabric down this end, don't we? Still, yeah, we're good. So we got that half inch of fabric there. So I just want to put a pin where I'm going to start. Stop. So I'm going to start here. So I'm going to try and draw you a little picture. Okay. There we go. So we're going to start here and lock it, go to the end, turn, go all the way around and come back. And we're going to come in that, that same amount. Um, I don't want you to have too much difficulty with turning it, but we do have a small space to turn through. We don't want to, we don't want it too big because we don't, we need a little bit on each end to know where the fold needs to be. So we're going to try it like that. Or I'll try it and you watch. And then if it works okay, you're good to go. But it, it, it's just a matter of um, taking your time turning it right side out so oh, so let me switch to the sewing machine and i can see my little mark so for me i have my j foot on i want a half inch seam so i've got this little eighth of an inch of fabric to the right of my foot and i want to keep that same distance the whole way um, sewing. If you look at your plate, five eighths, half an inch is four eighths. So I kind of went, I kind of went, uh, let me see, this is a fourth, so that's two eighths, three eighths, four eighths. So a four eighths would be a little, uh, it won't be halfway between these two marks. It'll be a little more to the right of the, of the two marks. Can you see the two marks right there? Because most, uh, most everyone has a, a bobbin cover that has markings on it. And if not, see how they're along your needle plate as well. Otherwise, just have a, a distance. It looks to be about an eighth of an inch. So fabric is past your foot by an eighth of an inch. And so your eye needs to watch along here the whole time you're sewing, not looking at the needle. The needle doesn't need you to stare at it. It needs you to have the fabric in the right place. 
No staring at the needle. So I just did a little locking in place stitch. And I'm going to stitch along, watching that edge. And I'm going to go slow because I don't have far to go before I have to turn. So when I turn, I want to have that same distance. Well, I have too much distance, so I need to go one stitch more, turn, and I'm good. So however many times you need to turn, always stop shorter than you think because it's easier to creep forward than it is to go backwards. Okay, so again, keeping an eye on the edge of the fabric to the foot. Every time I take a clip off or a pin out from holding the fabric in place, I've got to pay attention when I come up to these corners. So I should be able to stop just about at the corner, even with this corner, before I turn. Yep. Same thing. Got a little heavy footed there. Okay, I can I can take my pins out here because I drew a line. Otherwise, I can leave them in. So let me let me leave them in because we'll pretend there's no line there. Take the pins out. I'm just going to stitch a few stitches in. So that was about five or six stitches. And then I'm going to do a locking stitch. And then get my pressing mat. So what I want to do here is I'm gonna I want to flip this fabric up so I'm in essence it's like you're pressing open the seam so when I and the reason why we want to have that stitching let me move it a little closer the reason why we want to have that stitching here and here is so that we have somewhere some guidance to turn this we'll see if it's too if it's too um too tight a turn or not My, my cord was stuck. And then I'm going to turn it over. And I want to grab my, uh, so I have that inside um, where the pocket is. I'm not going to concern myself with that. I want to grab the, the um, piece of the, well, now, now I'm too close. I want to. I'm grabbing the fabric that is this long piece because they're going to be the two outside pieces. These will go, but we could do anything with these and get them as long as they're inside of the outside too. Okay. So before we turn it right side out. We need to trim this seam allowance because it's so huge. So we're going to trim it to about an eighth. And again, I'll show you. I'll do it from this side. And I want to make sure if I've got a pointy corner anywhere, I'm just going to cut it off. 
What we don't want to do is we don't want to cut this bottom section. And because we trimmed, yeah, I shouldn't have trimmed on top of that, should I? Um, because we already trimmed out the vinyl, it's not out in these seams anywhere. And I'll show you mine in a second. Okay, so see how I kind of rounded where those sharp points were. But that's about the distance we can be. Okay, so now we need to, and let me see. I'm trying to remember because we have to turn twice. Let's just get this turned right side out. And it, this may be in too far. I don't know. We'll see. I think it may be easier to turn it rather than trying to grab down this end because you got that vinyl here that doesn't want to bend. We're going to try to do it a little at a time. I think it's going to work out all right. Don't start poking and jabbing it with something. Try to just get it as best you can. Push it up through. So I'm pushing it up through with my thumb and holding on to the edges to pull it down. It's like one of those twisted up socks from your laundry that went through the washer and got all matted up. You can't get it out. You just got to take your time. So that's working out. It's working out okay. Just take your time. You might wrinkle your vinyl a little bit, but it'll be all right. Oh, see, once you once you get near the top of the pocket, it starts to, it starts to go good from there, because you then you just have fabric. Now I can use my well, look, I went I went through the pocket. That wasn't going to work. You got to get in between the, the the two back pieces, and just just take your time. And I'm going to run down the edges. You know, I always run down these edges. Okay, and then we got to get these little corners that we had at the bottom. Got to get those out. And you should have, this should be the back of your pocket. So if we, you know, let me think about this for a second. If we take this, I'm going to give this a word. I hadn't really thought about it because the last time I did it, I turned it up here and I decided I didn't like it. So I'm thinking that if I turn this here, and I'm going to go ahead and do mine before you do yours. But I think this is going to turn out... Um, Good. And what I need to do is I need to, I don't have my stiletto handy. I need to get in there and pull that edge up. My pin, my pin's too weak. Now that won't work. Let's see. And I, and I believe that more of this bottom edge will come out uh, when we, because we got to make one more turn. But, if I fold this in, it's like watching a science project. If I fold this in, 
Oh, you know, I don't, I was going to say if I fold this in, I almost melted my vinyl there. So I was thinking if I fold this in and stitch it, and then fold again. But I think I'm gonna try it just so to see. But I'm thinking so so you could right now you could whip stitch this, but I'm gonna try. But you really gotta get those corners out before you do this. I'm gonna try and see if I just stitch along this edge. And when we turn it, I'm going to have to go the whole edge. And when we turn it one more time, it'll be straight across. So normally, you would just whip stitch this close. But let, let's have, we might as well have an experiment today. So let me, let me experiment. And I'm not going to lock my stitch in case I have to undo it. But let's see, because we're going to turn it one more time. Guess I better put it on the desktop. You'll be watching nothing. I'm going to turn it one more time. So now that the right side of my window is outside, Is everybody waiting to see what's going to happen? I want to get it turned at least so when I'm poking my my uh, tool in, I'm not poking into the vinyl part. Oh, I think that's going to work good. Oh, we still have. I still have. What did I do? Oh, I didn't catch it all. All right. But yes, that would work. I didn't catch all of this one, but you can see right here, it's going to work. So let me go back. Let me turn it back again and see if I come in a little more, if it's still okay. I know my vinyl is going to be all ratty here in a minute, but we can smooth it out with the iron. Not directly. Okay. So this time, oh yeah, because I can see where I missed right there. So. Let me stitch from this side, because I think this is going to work really well. I just got to get this end poked out. Okay. So I stitched along here. Can you see? Here it is. But see how I didn't catch the back because I wasn't paying enough attention? So I'm going to just come in a little ways further. So I'm going to the end of the tag as, oh, not that far, as far as I can get to the edge. And this time I'm going to, I'm going to go up, I'm going to live on the edge. I'm going to lock it. And I want to go nice and straight across. And then I'm going to lock it at this end. So I'm going to show you before I turn it. Okay, so see, I came in a little further this time. See? Okay, so let me just give that a little bit of press. And let me turn it again. 
Oh, Christine, yeah, you got to do the double turn. I'm trying to think of what else we've done that we had to do the double turn. I can't remember what it was. Something. I did the same thing the other day, Christine, when I was making one of these up. I went, oh, I did that wrong. And then I remembered that, that I had worked on a project. Uh, I think it was an In the Who project. And we had that same. Oh, yeah. So this is going to work good. And not only that, I think the corners look better. Look, look how nice the corner looks. Check that out. It is a little it is a little bunchy of fabric there, I will say that. But you've got to be careful to make sure you you sew straight across that back. And I'm going to try to keep the iron away from that vinyl so I can press down this because it's so um, it's so thick there, you've got you've got at least four layers of fabric going there, and then I'm gonna just press. I don't really need to press this. So I, I it looks like I've poked holes in my vinyl. Let's see how if I can get the vinyl warm enough from the back side. Oh yeah. It's a little steamy, but it it uh, it's nice and looking. It's nice and smooth now. So if pressed from the back side, just do it a little, then flip it. Make sure once it's neat, because mine looked like I had I had poked something at it. I had so much pokiness going on. Okay, so now we're just gonna stitch. If you want to stitch all the way around. I don't think I'm going to on this one only because I got the wrong thread in. But you can stitch all the way around if you want to. Okay? So there we go. This is how that looks. And look at the, the bottom corners. They look better now than they did on that first turn. Okay? Oh, I dropped it on the floor. So now you have the option if you if you have a uh, one of those little grommet things, and I'll show that next time. But let's put in. I'm gonna matter of fact. I'm gonna let's see what I got. Let's see if I got some red thread. Here we go. I'm gonna put in some red thread. I'll put some red thread in, and then I'll stitch around the whole way around, and then we'll do a buttonhole. So while I'm getting my thread. You go ahead and get your buttonhole foot on. Um, baby lock, it's foot A. It's going to look like this, but probably shorter. But it is going to have all this white part to it. And I measured mine. So my opening is about... My opening is about three quarters of an inch to get the size buttonhole I wanted. You could do an eyelet. Ooh, shall we do an eyelet? Okay, who's for an eyelet? Who's for a buttonhole? Well, I'm getting my thread threaded, my machine threaded up with red thread. Let's see if anybody votes on it. Any voting yet? Are you going to let me decide? Okay. Look, getting my thread ready. And now I can't find the end of my, oh, there it is. Anybody have any questions? All right, I'm going to do a buttonhole if nobody, Nobody asked. Almost ready, no one. Oh, Christine, just in time. Christine wants an eyelet. 
All righty then. An eyelet. Okay. So on your machine, and I'm going to have to assume that you have a machine that has a one-step buttonhole. Or it has a foot like this. Um, no, the other one does too. Um, and a one-step buttonhole means that the machine will go the whole way around before it stops. Based on what size button you have in your um, foot. Okay, so eyelet it is. All righty. So, okay, Christine, here's what we're going to have to do. How do we know where the circle starts for the eyelet? We don't. Okay, so I'm going to do mine first. Let me set the buttonhole aside. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mark. Let's see. I'm going to do X marks the spot. That's about center. So I'm going to do a little X marks the spot. And I'm going to put my needle right where the two lines cross each other. Okay? I, oh, I'll make it bigger so we can see when it's done. Let me do this. So if you didn't have me to test for you, uh, and obviously I'm using a pen that erases. If you, it, it, oh, you know what? Hold on a second. I don't want to, I don't want to run into my seam, my seam allowance. So I'm going to come down a little ways. Okay, so I'm going to fold it in half. So I'm going to draw, and I'll make the line really big. Okay, so I'm going to sink my needle right where the two lines cross each other. You ready, Christine? So I'm going to pick my buttonhole tab, and at the end of your buttonholes, you'll have, okay, in most cases, at the end of your buttonholes on your machine, whether it's on the screen or whether it's on the flip top of the machine, you'll have, you should have one for sewing a button, then the eyelet, and then the, I have another kind of eyelet. So we want the eyelet, little circle. I don't have my eyelet tool here. If you have, when you bought your machine in your tools, if you had the screwdriver looking thing with an orange handle, and I swear I don't care what brand it is, it's that same one with the orange handle, and it's been that way since 1929. No, I'm not that old. I'm just making it up. It's a bright orange handle, and the end of it, you think it's going to be a screwdriver, but it's got a little round end to it, and part way up above the end, there's a hole that goes right through to the other side. I'll have to get mine out next time and show you. The hole is for, so it's like a rotary cutter at the end. So after you make your eyelet, you just push this down in, not on this, but on your cutting mat. Push it down in and it'll cut the, it's the perfect size to cut the hole for your eyelet. The hole that goes all the way through is when you build up all those holes of fabric inside of there, you can shake it out and it'll come out that hole because the whole opening that goes through to the other side is much bigger than that little tiny hole at the, at the bottom of the eyelet. Okay? I'm just going to check real quick and see if I have one handy. I found one. Okay, I did I did lie because I swear this is a new color orange. But this is what the tool looks like. And see how it's got those holes right there, right there? 
all right and it's got a little tiny hole there so your fabric after it builds up can come out the the bigger holes because it's like five times bigger than this one so if you've got this tool you can do an eyelet it's pretty exciting christine get your tool okay so i'm going to go to the sewing machine i'll switch the cameras and um let's see it tells you the j foot so i'm good and i'm going to sink my needle right in the center of that x that'll give you a good idea of how that eyelet's going to go <coughs> It could start at one end, the other, the middle, I have no idea. And normally I would just um, do it on a scrap, but we're going to live on the edge today and I'm just going to do it right on here. It's a luggage tag, not my prom dress. So let's switch over and let's see. Let me move the camera a little bit up. Okay, so... I can't get the cord over, I don't think, far enough. Watch your eyes for a second. There's so much glare. But it's this 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 one right here. I know it's it's glary, this way I'm facing, there's not much I can do about it. Yeah, let me there. Oh, sorry. There we go. See the little let me how can I hold the glare? I'm, I'm trying to see where the glare's coming from. It's just reflecting back, but it's that little circle one, and it's generally, oh, sorry about that. That was me. Okay, I think that's good right there. You think that's good? Okay, so. Um, if I was going to be, do, well, how do I, well, because I've got shape flex under there, that's going to help support either the buttonhole or this eyelet. You wouldn't want to have just the two pieces of fabric, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I can see already that my needle went to the left. So I'm guessing that that's going to be the left side of my eyelet. So I'm going to, uh, so I don't, the reason I turn this is I don't want to be in the center here and now it's going to go right and I'm going to go up into my seam allowance or off the edge. So I'm going to turn it because my needle is on the left, which could mean nothing, but hopefully it means something. So I'm going to, I'm still going to use that crosshair center, but I've got, because it's on the left, I don't, we'll see in a minute whether it's going to go around to the right or to the left. Because the needle on the left is generally the default of where the needle should always be. It wasn't meant to be in the middle, it was meant to be to the left so that you have more coverage of the foot and the feed dogs on your fabric so i just want to be hope hope well we'll see won't we we'll see we'll just have to go for it and we'll see so here we go oh, i want to try to have at least have this nice and straight you ready well the needle did go around to the right Okay, and I may, I'm going to go around twice just to hope and see, hopefully it, it'll still line up perfectly. And I'm going to make sure that the stitch is locked. Okay, let's get to the table, see what we've got. All righty, if I had probably, well, let's let's cut this. I'm trying to think if I, I lost my scissors. Oh, here they are. Okay, so there's where I ended up. 
So I really could have started because remember, because the needle was left, the needle was left. I moved the fabric to, no, we did. We started in the center, didn't we? Wait a minute. Yes. Okay. So I, I stitched it, th sorry, I stitched it this way. So it went right of where I started. I started with a needle in the center of the crosshairs and it went right. Does that help you any? I mean, it's an eyelet. It's only, what, a quarter of an inch? Okay, so see, I I uh, ironed away the, the uh, markings and now it just looks fine. But it is, it, it did center. So now let me move in a little closer. That was pretty exciting, wasn't it? Christine, come on, somebody be excited. I was excited. So here's my tool. And I'm just going to put it in the center of the. Oh, all right, I got to back. I got to back it up because I can't. I'm too far. I'm too far away from myself. Here we go. And I'm just going to. And you can hear the. You can hear the fabric cut because it's sharp like a rotary uh, cutter. And it went. Oh, went all the way through. Oh, here we go. Went all the way through. So let me clip off these threads. I uh, see it. Uh, there's not enough in there for it to shake out yet. So see, you can see my hand through there, all the way through, and it looks very nice. Oh, sorry. There's the back. There's the front. Now I did that in red, and then I have blue a blue ribbon. Let me put me back and, and you know you can get that um that satiny cordy kind of stuff that's you know, it's a round cord but it's pretty oops sorry and I did say I was gonna stitch around didn't I <laughs> Chris did you all right Christine did you make yours so my ribbon is probably a little too too um wide for that little eyelet so I'm gonna cut it on the angle my hand was going because I was thinking what can I use yeah a, a pen doesn't do it I know I'm using the thing that cuts, but I thought if I was nice to it. Well, what if I got, I got to, I've got to poke it through with something that isn't, uh, see everything I poke it through is, is um, sharp and pointed. So let me do this. I'm going to make, I'm going to make even more of an angle. I just have to have enough get through there to grab a hold of it. And this is quarter inch ribbon, so got it. There we go. So I would probably put mine through I know some people put the whole thing thing through and make the loop and, and my ribbon is too wide, but I can just put it through and I would have had longer, I probably should have had longer ribbon. Oh. And this ribbon has a, a right and wrong side to it. Oh, you didn't know what that tool was for? I, I can tell you, Christine, nobody ever did. And see, if I made it a little longer, I could have tied, I, uh, I would have had more to tie on. But if I untie this and tie it up further, because remember, I was going to use mine for my ring binder. So I'm going to put it through the ring of my ring binder. So I'm going to tie it up here. But before I tie it, I'm just going to take these and cut them on an angle.
And see, now I can put this through the ring binder and this can hang out the the um, side of the ring binder, you know, when you have it on your shelf and it's just that side. And I can put whatever's in that ring binder, I can put it, the paper for it in there. So how's that? So you can stitch all the way around. Um, okay, I'll go ahead and do it. I just got to move. I got to make sure I have this. Oh, see, I got to undo this again. See, Christine, if nothing else, you learned what this tool is for. Well, I'll put it right in there. And I'm pretty impressed that I, that I had it. I had to think for a minute. <coughs> Because I, because because I never use it, and let me just, uh, you know, see, I was gonna say, let me just take this out, but no, you're not gonna fool me. I'm not taking that out. So I'm gonna stick this part in here. I'm gonna hold that down, and I'm gonna stitch all the way around. So let's just get that stitched, and then we'll be done. So I think I will start right about here. And, and probably normally I would use um, maybe a blue or something. But we'll, I'll go red. I probably would have done it the same color as this. And I would have done, I just did this in white. But normally I would have done it in something else. I just did it in white so you could see it. Oh, oh. how about leaving it on your making a... How about leaving it on making your eyelet? I got a little eyelet started there. And no, no I'm not going to undo that. Oh, I'm going to make sure that ribbon's where it belongs and it's on the back. Be careful when you're coming by here. You don't want your pocket to flip back. Yeah, this is this is really thick through here. So let's see. All right, let's let's see. So I have my J foot on has this little button. See my see the button back here. So I've lifted my foot up. I think there we go. And I'm gonna push this button in, and I have to hold it. If your button won't go in, it's because this is up. And just bring it down so it's level. Push the button in. I have to hold the button until I put the foot down, and then it'll stay. And that button will pop out. The button will pop out automatically. That's what that button is there for. So let's finish up. Oh, Christine can't find hers. Christine, I'm going to tell you that it's in your bottom of your beauty box. Okay. So. We went all the way around. Okay, it went across here just fine. Um, so that button on your on your presser foot, and if you have a baby locker like brother, it's on the J foot. If you have the uh, Janome, it's on the A foot. The rest of them I can't really tell you. But that button, so your presser foot has to be 
flat to grab properly along with the feed dogs. So if it's doing this, the only part that it's touching is the fabric is way back here, so it can't go anywhere. So when you push that button, it levels it out, even if even if halfway was thick and halfway was thin. So if you got to the thicker part, start at the beginning of the thicker part, you want to be able to have that foot come down flat on the thicker part, and the thinner part will be down below. It won't matter. You've already passed that area. And then once it gets past the thicker part, that button will snap out, and it'll just continue on its way. So that's two things you learned today, Christine. Okay. So there we are, and after all that um, talk about my, uh, by me, about my directional fabric, for the most part, it doesn't really show. Maybe this one right here, but the rest of it doesn't really show. It does here, though. It shows like, like, it, like no tomorrow here. But I find that if I'm making something, um, as a sample, or if it's just for, like this is just a tag that I wanted to go on my notebook and I cut it wrong, I'm not gonna throw it away. I'll take it. My grandson will take it, somebody will take it. But in this case, I don't mean my tag, I meant any other thing I do. So when you cut your fabric wrong, you know, sometimes just don't let it bother you. Just Obviously, if it was your prom dress, you wouldn't, you'd be bothered. But something like this, just you, you cut it all out. Go ahead and keep going. It's okay. It'll be okay. And and if nothing else, you put it in a in a notebook in a clear, um, clear. What do you call those? Clear sleeve. Make some notes about you know how you made it or when you made it or the YouTube date. You know, Miss Lorene Schoolhouse. Uh, luggage tag, what's today? March 20th, I think it is. And just stick that in there because that'll remind you, oh yeah, I remember that. And it'll also remind you, oh yeah, I remember I cut that wrong too. So now when I do it again, I'll cut it right. Okay, so let's just take a second, see if there's any questions. You've been kind of quiet today. And it's such a nice day out. I don't blame everybody for being out. Um, I do have to work all day next Saturday. I do that once about every quarter or so. I have a all day event to teach on uh, Friday and Saturday. Um, so I won't have a live up. I'll try to put something up for the day that, um, you know, post at the, at the usual time. <clears throat> I don't know when. Um, I don't think Easter is the week after. I, I don't have a calendar in front of me because Easter weekend I won't be posting either. But I'll try to put something up in the meantime uh, that will go up on Saturday uh, so you'll have something to watch. But if not, just watch one of the other older videos that you promised yourself you would and do a project or do this project. So thanks. Oh, thanks, Christine. You're back to yelling at me again. <laughs> just kidding. Okay, so if you do a tag, you know, post it on Miss Marine Schoolhouse uh, Facebook on yesterday's post. It's about the tag. I'll stick this one up there. I think I posted the. I think this is the one I posted. But because everybody likes to see the fabrics that everyone uses, and they really get a kick out of it, so why not make somebody smile and show them show them your tag? If it didn't come out perfect, just hold it back a little further. So thanks again, everyone, for joining in. Make sure you put your tools where they belong. Put everything away and have a great afternoon and the rest of the weekend. And we'll see you soon. Bye.